direction. With that, I think we're going to continue our discussions. We'll continue talking about periods before the imprisonment for a while longer, and then either before lunch or straight after lunch, move into discussing issues that happen during the imprisonment of a parent. I suppose that we have some uh, issues that uh, we, we would like to clarify. The first one is how, how much shall we let the children involved with the legal, legal proceedings against their parents. The second one is uh, what about the age of the children who can involve with the legal proceedings. Uh, that is some issue that I would like to raise to make it clear so we, we can have a very clear recommendation to the state parties. Uh, Pila, would you like to get the floor now? Pila? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, <laughs> see, uh, yo quisiera I just wanted to ask a question related to countries, what happens in countries at the time of imprisonment of parents, when the children are present and when the press are there. Because uh, you have the rights of the press to be freely informed. And so that uh, runs counter to the principles, perhaps, of the convention. Waiting for the next speaker <laughs> who would like to share the ideas or information, please. Thank you. Uh, Kun from Morning Tears. Um, well, I've seen in some of the countries where we work that uh, that actually when parents go to prison, even in pretrial, they 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 actually lose their parental rights. And in some countries, it's very explicit that they lose their parental rights. And in other countries, it's not explicit, but it is just de facto. And I think it, the, the degree that a child is involved in, in, in the whole procedure of, of going to court should also be decided with the parent. The parent should also give consent in those things. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. Um, in England, um, we also think it's important um, uh, to remember that in general, uh, parents have um, general human rights, but as parents, they, they have responsibilities, and those are also informed by their children's rights. Please, please uh, uh, tell your, your name. Hello, Kimberly Sfabo with the Child Rights and Protection uh, Consultancy uh, in the US. Um, and I'm not sure if anyone he else here is representing the interests of the Native American children in the US. So just a, a quick point, and that is the, the very um, challenging situation in the United States for Native American children who are under uh, not only federal or state or tribal jurisdiction, but which places them at risk of um, usually having their parents under federal law, which means the separation for them from their parents in federal prisons means that that it's quite far away it's not at all a local situation of uh, the incarceration of their parents and that right of being close or having the link and connection with their parents is made almost impossible and i just wanted to to bring that point up thank you please 
Lucy Gamble from Eurochips. Um, in respect of uh, considering how the child's views could be taken and the impact on the child at the point of sentence could be considered, um, because a number of countries actually have a principle that the, the impact of the, the sentence on the child should be considered, um, a consideration could be given to introducing a system like we have in the UK for victims of crime, where after the, um, the jury, once, once uh, the decision has been taken about whether the defendant is guilty, if they are guilty at that point, perhaps a proposal could be that the child provides an impact statement on the consequence of an imprisonment, uh, a sentence of a custodial sentence on them, which has to be considered by the judge when, as in the same way that a victim impact statement is considered. Uh, uh, this lady first and do after, please. Action for Prisoners' Families. Um, and um, just to follow up from um, the last contribution, where the child is, for instance, a baby, um, the parent um, can also uh, uh, make a statement about impact. Nancy Lokes from Families Outside in Scotland. Um, we just want to make sure along the lines of the, the child and family impact, state, uh, impact assessments that these are done at the point of custody and not necessarily at the point of sentence. But also the tendency for child impact assessments is to influence the sentencing decision. But our concern is that it needs to influence the care and needs of the child and what's done about those um, regardless of what happens to, um, to the accused um, or sentenced person. Um, for, and we've also been focusing today a lot of the discussion on care arrangements, but there's so much broader, there's much broader impact than just care arrangements in terms of the family's housing, the family's income, access to schools, um, targeting from neighbours or from, um, uh, you know, bullying at, at schools and so on. There's a much broader impact that needs to be taken into account in terms of um, the needs and support that's available for the children and for the family. Thank you. Will be uh, next. Okay. I I could not see <laughs> any uh, body would like to go on uh, this issue. Anyhow, I I would like to uh, have uh, a, a brief conclusion that uh, we talking about children who. Who, uh, that, uh, whom their parents, their parents have been prosecuted or during the hearing or legal proceeding, and we have to look at uh, into two or three aspects. The first one is how we can uh, let the children participate in legal proceeding or knowing about the situation of their parents. The second one is what uh, can be done to uh, provide care and protection, not just only on the uh, legal issue of the parent, but including maybe we're talking about the guardianship. Uh, it may be necessary for the child to have a guardian, a new guardian to take care of if the parents cannot uh, live outside. Uh, next will be how we can uh, prevent the children from being bullied or have privacy, have private life, as in the past. Uh, all these things. The last one is the, the visit and communication between children and their parents, how we can uh, facilitate and what kinds of condition of the visit. I, d I don't know in, in other country, but I know that in my country and my neighboring country, sometimes when the children go to meet, to go to visit the parents, they have to uh, say some, I mean, Talking, not 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 face to face, but uh, there will be a bar, 
in 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 between them, except just only on the Father Day, Mother Day, or Thai New Year celebration, they will allow the parents to get in touch with the children. I mean, to to touch the children, to talk to the children closely. So, is there anybody to make contribution more on this? Okay, please. It's just rather obviously there is a, a need for children to see their parents um, in a in as, as natural an environment as possible. They also have a right to sort of interact with their parents, to play with their parents, and to to be parented by by their parents while they're in custody. My broader point, though, is on the access um, children's access to their parents is more often than not related to their parents' behaviour within the criminal justice system, and so access to those. Mother Day, Family Days, and and whatnot within the prison system can be restricted to a very small minority of children, and arguably, this could be the group of children that need that access the least. Um, and so, it's to make sure that we don't limit children's rights to see their parents um, um, because of their parents' behaviour within the criminal justice system. Thank you. So, please. Just re uh, Nico Jutzen from Scotland's uh, Commissioner for Children and Young People. Um, just really to pick up on the point that was just made, uh, that's something that certainly we found in, in the work that we've done on, on the children of prisoners is that visits are frequently treated as a, a privilege of the prisoner as opposed to a right of the child. And I think, just to pick up on what was just said before there, that which is part of the same argument really, um, that that is not acceptable uh, if we think that children's rights should be at the forefront of all decision making uh, that affects children. Um, yeah, I'll we'll just leave it at that actually for now. No. Yes, uh, Peter Shaw Smith, Institute for Danish Institute for Human Rights. Uh, just to uh, pick up on that, I think that um, uh, I, I, I would like to, uh, on a general, very general note, urge the CRC to, in all these different questions, considering arrest. Uh, pre-trial imprisonment, sentencing, etc. Uh, um, there are many different standards. Uh, we're talking about them today and different suggestions of taking care of the, the, the child's perspective and publications suggesting standards, etc., etc. But regardless of, of what specific standards you would like to promote, I think it, I, I, would, I would like to urge you to uh, simply say when you visit countries, make reports, etc., make sure that there are systems in place which take care, which consider the rights of the child in all these different phases, because that is, that is typically not the situation. There are examples, especially when it comes to sentencing of, of practices where actually there are ways of considering the rights of the child. But when it comes to arrest, pre-trial imprisonment, visiting condition, communications, etc., it's, it's typically not at all seen from the rights of the child perspective and, and children of imprisoned parents. So regardless of what specific standards one would like to uh, choose to back up and suggest as good practice in all these different areas, uh, the very least that we, c that we can, uh, uh, that we can um, should be able to agree on is that the rights of the child has been considered in all these different uh, situation phases. Thank you. Please. Gracias, Virginia. Thank you. My name is Virginia. I'm from uh, Def Children Child Defence International. I'd like to talk about care for children when their parents have been detained. Very often, children or the children's families, or either the children don't have family, or they don't want to. S the family don't want to look after the children. They don't want responsibility. So the only response that the child can seek recourse to is that of the state. In uh, temporary institutions, but very often these institutions are for children that have already been declared as abandoned or are suffering from neglect. So what category would these children fall under in these institutions? It's important to define this, uh, as well as the treatment that they have in these institutions, these temporary care institutions which aren't equipped to deal with them. It's also important that states include these uh, people, these children, in the national systems of protection. They need to be a priority sector of the population, and they need to be given adequate treatment. Thank you. 
प्लीज जी सर As I say, I'm Sylvia from Argentina, from the Argentinian Appeals Court. On what Virginia Murillo was saying, in our experience, very often, the extended family don't want to look after the children uh, because they don't have the resources to do so. Uh, perhaps their grandparents that find it very difficult to m handle teenagers. They're poor families. They might have five or six or seven children, who and they can't ha they can't cope with three more children, for example. Very often, it might be a family who's uh, struggling financially. But also, I think it does experience to show that with appropriate support, with psychosocial support, with guidance, and with assistance, in 98% of the cases where somebody from the family takes care of the child, when the parents are in prison, things can uh, things can work successfully. But what happens is that the very often the families are left alone to deal with the children. They're not given any support. They don't trust the official institutions. They don't trust the justice system. They're not going to seek help because they don't know where to seek it, or perhaps they prefer not to have the official institutions meddling. So they are really isolated. So I think it's really important that from the outset, from the point of arrest, that there be a link established with the family, with those who are going to support the family, and the links need to be kept, kept with the detainees and kept with the children. And once the uh, judicial process is completed, perhaps they'll be the children will be returned, but they still need to keep in constant contact throughout the entire process. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to bring to the notice of uh, the committee that perhaps this, this the discussions that we're having today on the general day of on, on, on general day of discussion on children of prisoners needs to be linked up with the earlier dis general days of discussion that we had, one on the right of children to be heard, and the second one, more importantly, the right of the right to adequate resources that was held two years ago, because the question that from everyone's point, I mean, everyone's points that have been raised, what is very clear, if there are, there is not enough financial allocations and resources made to ensure that there is support for children of prisoners, there's, it's not going to happen. So um, the committee, perhaps, when it examines its reports of countries, needs to very categorically look at how the problem of a, is the problem of children of prisoners being addressed in the reports of the countries? B, is money being allocated to make sure that these services are made available, both financial and human? And finally, I, since I've got a turn, I'm going to use it to say that the committee might wish to also consider the fact that special rapporteurs who are under the who, um, Office of the High Commissioner make it their mandate to also examine um, children, the rights of children of prisoners when this was say for the ch in, in their mandate against on, on violence or on education they could also pay a little bit more attention to the children of prisoners and that way they would be a far more main that we would be able to mainstream the, the rights of children of prisoners into other mandates and other pre fields as well thank you very much thank you, thank you. but i would like to explain a bit uh, that uh, the committee normally will not uh, focus on specific group of students, but uh, this group of students belong to students in need in general. I mean, if we have uh, some concern or some 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 what do you call some events that should make us should alert the state party or the committee. I suppose that we we can set up or else we have to put many group of students in, into the report of the state party, which is very difficult to do. Uh, 
Can I respond? Yes, please. Um, perhaps what we would need to do is to ensure that children of prisoners is included in the list of children in especially difficult circumstances. That way, okay. the committee that, would that, be able to. That, yeah. that is that is always okay. always Thank in you. the children in needs. Okay. Thank you. I'm Peter Graham from committee. And uh, I agree with my uh, colleague, Chairman, uh, that it's very difficult for committee to, to have uh, so many time for evaluating. We have not enough resources. That is a really very specific issue. <laughs> and then we need to, to monitoring the uh, country. Uh, it is not possible to go in depth to all the problems. But I am. Uh, I am uh, agree with your uh, opinion and so on. What I would like uh, to stress is maybe what committee can uh, be uh, helping for for the country to to stress some minimum standards for the children with uh, parents living in prison. I mean that. What do we need? The first is minimize the effect of incarceration of the parents, and then, as as we ha have heard here and uh, this morning, there is an absolutely different situation in each country. We need to to make some common standards, and then to 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 priority for each country. I mean that is, for example, from Europe or my country, I am from Slovakia, that is extremely important is the communal politics, is the social services for children provided to be specialized, maybe, as uh, some colleagues from UK uh, told before. I am fully agree that it is very needed the special approach of the social workers to the children. And then, as you said, the appointment of new guardians to the children. Sometimes when we evaluate the best interest of the child, it is not best interest to the child to go every month uh, visit the parents in the, uh, in the prison. But best interest to the child maybe should be much more better to to, uh, to, to go to the grandparents in other uh, as a city, as an experience from my country, there is much more better environment that nobody knows about this big family background. And the child feel much more better, maybe living with grandfather, that we need to be very sensitive and very individual approach. That is not one line that this is better, this is not. Uh, I, I mean that the role or uh, um, um, the um, great family uh, and uh, relatives is very important in this case. Thank you. Uh, Ilik first, and after the, the lady in front of him, Ilik first, please. Uh, not Ilik, uh, um, okay, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Alan Kikuchi. I represent SOS Children's Villages International in Geneva. Um, I was only going to re I won't reiterate points that have already been made, as, as Mr. Gurans just made it. But my my principal point was to say that within the framework of the UN guidelines for the alternative care of children, as we've started to touch on issues around best interests, around family-based care, around alternative care and family support. The underlying logic in there is a case-by-case -case decision making process. Best interests are not predetermined in advance. And I think any recommendations we have around decision making processes and the application of best interests should be about case-by-case -case family assessments of capacity and need and necessary use and appropriate allocation into alternative care. Slightly expanding on Mr. Grant's point, but case-by-case -case decision making is critical. Thank you, Alan. Please. Sabine Scooter from John Red Cross. Um, I would uh, draw the attention of uh, the committee to the following point. Um, we have mentioned before that people, that families might be afraid of the local uh, youth authorities, being afraid that the children uh, might be taken into public care or something like that. And this is uh, why I want to stress the role of the NGOs. Um, 
in that point, um, uh, non-governmental organizations, help organizations, can have a, a crucial role in helping families and not uh, uh, being uh, uh, and not creating that fear families have in some times. Of course, getting the funding of of the state. And of course, this must be uh, accompanied by a sort of campaign uh, uh, of information. And the state uh, should be obliged to uh, to make a big information campaign about the rights of the children in these issues, and that uh, not only the children and the families themselves, but also um, the social workers in every um, part of uh, social work, as well as teachers in school, for example, should learn about this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, do, do you speak after him? Because he, he sits <laughs> beside me. So, <laughs> I mean, he, he informed me first that uh, he would like to speak. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Um, I think that we are moving towards discussing some of the other issues, but also because of the time, I think it's important that we definitely um, move towards more substantially discussing issues around the during imprisonment. A lot of the discussion around alternative care um, is included in this, and I would hope that we can continue this useful discussion. But I'd like to outline as well some of the other issues that we can discuss up till lunch at one o'clock and then carry on discussing after lunch when we come back at three o'clock um, for a time then. Um, the particular issues that I want to discuss around the time during imprisonment include contact with the incarcerated parent between the children and the incarcerated parents, um, issues around um, life, out, life on the outside for the children, which may include issues around um, housing, accommodation, care, schooling, schools may be a particular area, um, also around friendships, free time and other aspects of life, how they're affected by parental imprisonment. I also want to look at issues around which have been discussed